My name is Joel Ortiz. I'm a rapper, hip hop artist from Brooklyn, New York, and um, I'm getting better. I've been rapping since I was about 10 years old. So um, yeah, this has uh, been a while. Uh, I remember coming out my building, seeing ciphers. That's what introduced me to rap. I wasn't even being a fan of music on the radio or, or music that I heard. It was just ciphers. You know, me standing in front of the building, rhyming and trying to have the illest verse to conquer that little crowd. And then from the crowd to the block, from your block to your area, and then, you know, just keep it moving and so you get in that studio and find them, find them words to go over that beat correctly, you know what I'm saying? So but my mom, my mom's had a, a, a drug addiction and I didn't want to leave out the college and get some kind of fucking letter or some phone call. Like my mom's dead OD or some shit like that. So I decided to, either, to give up my life at that point stay home with my mom and shit, but through all that shit, I was big, that was basically like one of the roughest times of my life, because I was fucking, uh, I was broke, you know what I'm saying? I ain't had no job, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I ended up doing some shit I wasn't proud of to support myself and my, my, my first child then, and um, the only thing that was therapeutic for me, to make me, you know what I'm saying, say, damn, did you make the right decision, was rap. You know I'm saying, I used to write rhymes to myself, and just keep writing rhymes and writing rhymes, writing rhymes about everything. Until eventually, you know, I went to, when I was in the studio and I listened back and I said, damn, I got something here. All that was in the session before me, I mean, after me was coming in listening, I'm like, damn, that shit is crap. You know, I, and I realized when I heard myself back in the studio that this might be what I'm supposed to do. There's numerous things that stand out to me. Like the, the, one, the one battle I did do in my whole career when I decided to just do it. When my, my boy Max Glazer introduced me to the NBA Live Battle in 2005 and landed me on a video game. I was like, damn, this is, this is kind of fresh. I won a battle, it was like, you know, across the whole United States. You know what I'm saying? That was that was a fresh uh, event in my career. Um, other than that, the phone call from Dr. Dre, that was huge. I was like, this is a fucking left. Here I am, Brooklyn, New York artist, trying to get a fucking record deal. Can't get one to save my fucking ass, and I get a phone call with 310. Fucking Eric called me Dr. Dre, ready to fly me out the next day to sign me. So I was, you know, those are those are two two things that stand out to me. And of course, I can't I can't I can't front E1, uh, well, formerly known as Koch, when they gave me my first deal, my first actual deal. Stretch Armstrong, first time I rocked on Stretch Armstrong show. Me and Pretty Ugly had a single called Brooklyn of Philly. Baby. That was dope. First, that was the first time I ever heard myself on a radio. So it's not a one. It's not one event. It's a bunch of things that stand out when you're talking about uh, when I knew I I knew I, I was uh, in the right direction. My game plan is is not a game plan. <laughs> I just write rhymes. I don't have no. I'm not no gimmick. I don't have a stage name for that reason. I'm Joe Ortiz when the lights go on and when they go off. Same thing you see at the show is the same thing you give death to after the show. There is no game plan, I just write rhymes. I like to rhyme, I like to be the best I can be over beats. Dre had no fucking clue who I was. He had no clue, he didn't know what movement was going on. He, had no, he didn't know nothing. He heard music, that was it. That was enough for him to put me on a plane to fly me out and introduce me to the aftermath in the school. That was it, there was no game plan. Was, you know what I'm saying, my CD landed on his desk. He put it in and said, what the fuck is this? I'm flying this out, flew me out. One, one little dinner meeting, next day, lawyers involved, aftermath. No game plan, just rhymes and, 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 and rhyming all the time, doing everything I could possibly do. Grinding, standing outside of SOBs and all these small venues, demanding to perform, trying to get out of that box that, you know, but they pigeonholed me for a long time, saying that I was a nice Puerto Rican rapper, you know what I'm saying? And that fucking wall, that invisible wall was up for a long time for me real talk, so it was no game plan, it was just, I right, put me next to the nigga that you think is hot and let, let everybody else decide. I want people to understand, like, I love who I am. I love my heritage. Love being Puerto Rican. Well, y'all yeah, already know what it is. But do you, do you niggas ask, yo, <laughs> how does it feel to be a, a hip-hop artist being that you're black? <laughs> like, like, I hate having to answer this question. Because hip-hop don't have a color, don't have a nationality. You understand, like, if you remove, the, if you've never seen a visual of me, and you pop me in, you just listen to the music. You understand? Like the music either moves you or it doesn't. You don't know, have to know my where I'm from. You just have to know what it is. Like 
Dudes in Africa play drums. If I get an African dude to play a drum on one of my beats and the record is moving, you're going to be like, yo, what nationality is the dude that played the drums? <laughs> like, no, it's just moving. I embrace who I embrace who I am. I love I love who I am. Don't get it twisted. But I'm not a Latin hip hop artist. I'm a hip hop artist. You understand? I, that happens to be Latin. You understand? So Fat Joe, Big Pun, D Reels, you know, beat nuts on nigga like this is hip hop, man. Niggas be break dancing from crazy legs and all this is hip hop. Puerto Rican, forget about Puerto Rican. Latinos been there since the beginning. This is not nothing brand new. I'm saying we ain't just trying to come into a game that was created <clears throat> by just African Americans. This is we was there in the beginning with big boom boxes too, nigga. So I, I didn't understand that box when I came in. Because when you were when you're short and you're trying to rhyme, your, your goal is to be the best at rhyming. Maybe one day get on a radio. Maybe one day get a record deal and move your family out of the projects. You know what I'm saying? And and you would you wouldn't think that. The, who you are, nationality was, could hinder that. You just thought, you know, you just think that if you're the best, you're the best. But it ain't like that. But I embrace who I am. I love my people. My hat goes off to anybody who could finish 12 years of school and wanted two more fucking school. <laughs> Hats off to you. I was fucking done in 11th grade, but I just pushed it through for the simple fact my mom's in high like, school diploma and she wanted me to do it. So I pushed it through, besides the fact that I was an intense learner. I was always competitive, you know what I'm saying? Like I always wanted to be the best that I can be amongst everybody else, no matter what. So I don't like when they use the word nerd. I wasn't a nerd, I was just intense learner. Work ethic is work ethic, son. You gotta do what you gotta do. Work feels like work though. That's what niggas don't understand. Like the first word in work ethic is work. So don't think that work ethic is gonna be easy. Like don't think nothing is gonna land on your lap. You're not hitting a lotto. You're not hitting the mega million. It's not happening. Leave it alone. Work to the point where you could be a mega millionaire. You know what I'm saying? Like, if that's what you want to do. If you're going to school, go to school and go, go at it. Like, and, and as far as the music game, I was doing everything. But nigga approached me that I don't give a fuck if he was a crummy looking, bummy looking nigga with a book bag on. He said, Y'all got a mixtape and I want to freestyle. He got me. If it was a big ass DJ, or a little ass DJ, a big ass club on a Saturday night, or a hole in the wall on a Monday in, in the gutter part of Brooklyn. I was performing. There is no, there is no picky choosy shit in hip hop. Too many niggas trying to do this shit, and too many relationships for you to be feeling like you bigger than what you are. One day you hot, one day you not. If you don't do everything, it ain't gonna pop for you. I'm sorry. Niggas don't respect niggas that pick and choose on a level where they can't pick and choose. You gotta do what you gotta do. Each one teach one a, a, a fucking show venue with eight people to turn into 64 fans once each one of those eight people tell eight people. See, I'm smart, man. Motherfucking, you gotta do whatever. You gotta do whatever it takes. I don't fuck what it is. The kid in Idaho no longer exists. There is no kid in Idaho, there's no kid in Montana. All those little towns, it is gone. I said 10 years ago. The internet makes everybody next door neighbors. Your outlet is through the computer, my brother. There's, there's websites, there's people you can reach out to. You can get your email on. Like, I mean, the internet was so instrumental in my career, I can't even explain. Like, I was one of the first people to write write journals, giving people a, a you know an inside a inside look at who I am as a person. So when they when they hear me, they don't feel like a fan of a song. They feel like the fan of the person behind it. Uh, that was one one outlet. You got your MySpace page. Things of that nature. Twitter, uh, YouTube, put post YouTube things up. Uh, find out where shows are at. Crash those with your mixtape. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's too many ways to network. Like, yeah, I'm in a popping city, but you can visit my city in one fucking click of the return button. Like, you can come right through here. You know what I'm saying? So, do grind, grind, find out. Make the phone calls you make. You know what I'm saying? You, you already know what it is. Make the phone call. Each phone call sets you up in a different direction. Smile, uh, shake hands, smile, do lunches, Embra embrace hip hop because it'll, em it'll embrace you back. Yeah, what? Right. It's your boy Joel O.T. Brooklyn Zone 718 in the building, stand up. You already know I'm kicking. I'm kicking with my dude based out of Boston. Am I correct? P.S.
We the best. <laughs> and everything, my dude. Keep it working, keep it pushing, keep it locked right here. Yes, we the best.com. Yep.